Hi everybody, my name is Jim with Fullman Adventure Club and today we're going to be doing a review of the Akma 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery that they sent to me for free to review. Now this isn't the first Akma product that I've uh, reviewed. Basically over two years ago I reviewed both of their solar generators and they've been working great so far for the last two years so I had no problems reviewing their battery. This is a group 31 size lithium iron phosphate battery with 100 amp hours of juice inside of it so why don't we just get right into the unboxing, the tech specs, test this guy out and see if it's right for you. If it ends up being something that you're interested in I will put a link in the description below so you can check this guy out. Why don't we get right into it. So as I said, this is a group 31 sized battery and its dimensions are 6.77 inches wide, 12.91 inches in length and 9.06 inches in height and comes in at a weight of 23 pounds. So some benefits of a life PO4 battery compared to lead acid batteries is obviously the charge cycles and the lifespan. These will last about 10 years with 4,000 cycles. So if you discharge this battery every single day for 365 days a year, divide that by 4,000, you'd get about 10.9 years out of this battery and it would still have 80% capacity remaining. Um, also the weight is a huge advantage to these types of batteries. This comes in at 23 pounds compared to lead acid that would probably be in around the 60 pound range. Charging and discharging lithium iron phosphate batteries in sub-freezing conditions can damage the cells permanently. So this particular battery does have a low temperature cutoff protection if it is exposed to those really cold conditions to protect the battery. So with their power density and their flexibility and their light weight, these are ideal for solar situations and RV setups or anything else that you can throw at them. All right, so starting with what's in the box here, we're just gonna open this guy up. And as you can see, we have some foam to protect the battery. You're gonna have your manual and your registration card. Set those to the side. You're also going to have your little battery terminal lugs so you can attach your cables. And we're gonna have the battery itself. Pull off the plastic there, check that guy out. And now we're gonna do a capacity test on this guy. So, charged it up completely overnight until it was completely full and then we're gonna go ahead and connect it to my little capacity tester and we'll see exactly how many amp hours we actually get out of this guy. So, I'm gonna disconnect the charger, hook up the capacity tester, and once we do that, I'm gonna reset everything. Then we're gonna put this on about two amps of draw and we're just gonna let that run. The capacity tester is gonna go until there's absolutely no current left. So you can see we're at 12.6 volts and we're gonna adjust this just a little bit till we're just above about two amps of power draw and we're gonna see exactly what we get out of that. So you can see we're supposed to get 100 amp hours of power out of this guy. It doesn't have watt hours listed, but once we let this run for 52 hours, you can see we actually came up with 106.06 .06 amp hours and 1318.99 watt hours. So it outperformed what it said it was gonna do there, which is great. And that test took 52 hours to complete. So that's a perfect test, definitely delivers the capacity that was promised. Why don't we go ahead and hook this up to my solar wall and we'll go ahead and put this through some current draw tests and see if it has protection and stuff like that. So here's the setup. We have this connected with some nice big thick cables here. These are gonna to run to my bus bars that are gonna travel up through a battery shunt that's gonna track exactly how much current is going through the battery. And we're gonna be able to read that on this little display right here. We are also going to have uh, this Xantrax inverter that's gonna be powering this experiment. And that will be shown on that screen right there with Bluetooth and I will throw that up for you guys. And we're also gonna have a timer so we can see exactly what's going on while we run this 1500 watt Bornado with adjustable settings so I can actually push this over the 100 amp current limit of this battery. And we're gonna see if this actually has protection built in to see if you're pulling too much current out of it which would damage the cells over time. We're gonna see if that's actually gonna be able to shut off. We also have that little cell phone going on there that's gonna give us a nice clear readout of this display, which is currently charging. You can see we're at 54.3 amps coming into the battery at around 770 watts. And once I turn this switch right here, that's gonna turn off grid power and we're gonna to go to uh, running completely off of the Akamo battery and we're gonna be able to see if we can push this over the limit and get that BMS or battery management system to trip and turn off. So I'm gonna go ahead and enlarge that on the display for the inverter. And you can see when I flip this switch off, we're gonna lose grid power there and we're gonna switch from charging to discharging. So now you can see we're discharging at about 17 amps 
225 watts because I am running a lot of other stuff in the basement off of this solar wall, so my computers, etc. But now we're gonna turn on that heater until we go over the 100 amp threshold and we'll see if the battery is actually gonna protect itself by shutting down uh, once we run that over 100 amps. So what we're gonna do is turn that heater on and we're currently at 125 amps. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw up a clear display of that and we will let that run to see if it actually protects itself during this test. Okay, so let me go ahead and enlarge our display. We'll go to my little mounted camera and throw that information up for you guys so you can see a little more clearly. There we go. So we're gonna ignore the 335 amp hours that are listed here. That's because this is usually connected to a much larger battery bank that runs my basement during the day. These are the important numbers we're gonna be watching right here. And you can see we're drawing 125 amps at 1.4 kilowatts, which is 1400 watts. And we're gonna let that run. The battery should protect itself at some point to keep from damaging the cells. So we're gonna see exactly how that does. And as we get to the four minute mark here, the battery is actually going to protect itself and shut down. You can see that happen right here. The battery does reset itself, but of course everything turns right back on. It starts drawing a crazy amount of amps. You can see this jump all the way up to 140 amps right there. And uh, the battery shuts down again. So the BMS did functionally protect the battery and shut itself down. So I'm gonna reset this, connect to grid power. We're gonna throw a little bit of charge on this. You can see it's charging at 54 amps. We're gonna let that charge up for just a little bit. And then I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the grid power again. And this time we're gonna try and stay right around 100 amps, just a little below it. So we can make sure that the battery is capable of delivering 100 amps of current for an extended period of time. So this time I'm gonna turn the heater back on, but to a lower setting, and we're gonna try and keep this under 100 amps. So you can see this is just what my basement is using currently, 235 watts, 17 amps. Now we're gonna kick on the heater. You can see that go up to 85 amps at 1,000 watts. And we're gonna let this run. We're gonna start the timer and we're gonna let this run for about 33 minutes. And I will add a couple of little things just to see if I can't get that a little closer to 100 amps. And so we're gonna speed this up, speed up the video and see how we do here. All right, so now you can see I'm, I'm adding some stuff. So now we're more, more closer to the 89 to 95 amp mark. And I finally turn on a couple of other monitors after about 20 minutes and we get it right at 100 amps. You can see that come up right about here at the 20 minute mark. Now we're pulling 100 amps to 96 amps and that runs for an additional 10 minutes until we get all the way up to 33 minutes. And so it was perfectly capable of pulling this 100 amps worth of current for a very long extended period of time. So it seems like the BMS is working perfectly and we're gonna go ahead and turn it off at 33 minutes. Very successful test. And everything is working just fine. We're still putting out heat. Everything's working great. We're right at 100 amps. So we are good to go. Perfect test. Okay, I think we can shut that down. And just for fun, I also threw a little temperature gun on it just to see what we we're uh, dealing with. And the cables were 126 degrees. The terminals, the battery itself was at like 92 degrees and the terminal was at around 116, which is just barely warm to the touch. So did really well. Well, there you have it guys. It passed all the tests that I threw at it. It has capacity that it promised and it, it had a battery management system that actually shut it down before the cells got damaged when we over uh, taxed it on current. And it was able to also maintain that 100 amp draw continuously through the entire cycle. Now, if you're gonna be using a battery like this at 100 amps of current constantly, um, you're gonna wanna go ahead and split that load between another battery. Even though you can pull 100 amp hour, amps of power out of them, you don't necessarily wanna do that all the time for the entire cycle, because um, it's just gonna shorten the lifespan. So split that load if you're gonna be doing that a lot. If you're just using it for like a microwave or something, it's gonna be five minutes or so, that's no big deal whatsoever. But that's just a word of caution for you. So this battery did quite well. I love lithium iron phosphate batteries. And if you want to check out the price and more information on this guy, 
link in the description below. The price point of these is coming down every day, which I love. And so I love testing and reviewing these so that you guys can kind of figure out what's gonna be right for you. So if this video was helpful, please like, share, subscribe. That really helps me out. And until the next video, my name is Jim with Fullman Adventure Club. Thanks so much for watching you guys and happy camping.